problem set, we're asked to predict which of the following factors would cause the greatest increase in GFR. So in order to solve this problem, let's first go back and revisit the three main pressures that are involved in bulk flow processes in the glomerulus. So in order to do this, we're just going to represent the glomerular capillaries very simply, much like we did in the systemic circulation. So these would be our endothelial cells. So within this, this is going to be our glomerular capillary. So right below that, we'll be representing Bowman space, where the potential urine is being formed. So there are three main pressures that we saw here in the glomerulus that would be influencing the bulk flow of fluids going from in or out of the glomerular capillary. So first of all, we have our very generic representation of a heart, which will be pumping. And this creates a pressure that's called the blood hydrostatic pressure. So as that heart pumps, it's going to be pushing blood into our glomerular capillaries. And this pressure is going to promote filtration. So the movement of fluid from within the glomerular capillary and into Bowman space where it can then form urine. All right, now the other major pressure that we have is due to the large molecular weight proteins that are retained in the glomerular capillaries because they're too large to pass out typically through those endothelial cell clefts. So these proteins create an osmotic pressure which attracts the fluid back into the glomerular capillaries and that's called the blood colloid osmotic pressure. So this pressure promotes reabsorption or the movement of fluids from Bowman space back into the glomerular capillary. All right, and the last pressure that we'll look at is the capsular hydrostatic pressure. And so this is a back hydrostatic pressure that does promote reabsorption. And this is just simply due to space restriction. So as we go into Bowman space, that's a restricted space. So as you start to filter things out, it can create a back pressure to move fluids back into the glomerular capillaries. Okay, so what we're looking at here is trying to determine what these different pressures could do to influence the GFR. So I want you to think of the GFR as being that movement of fluid filtering out of the glomerular capillaries. So what GFR is actually measuring is the amount of filtrate that's formed in all of the renal corpuscles of both kidneys each minute. So there are a couple different ways that we could increase GFR. We could either increase the filtration, so there's more fluid that's being pulled out from the glomerular capillary into Bowman space and forming potential urine, or we could decrease the reabsorption in the glomerulus. So maybe you have the same amount of fluid that's passing out, but there's less fluid that's being attracted back to the glomerular capillary. So either one of these factors could increase our GFR like the problem asks us to. So let's go through each one of the response choices and just see whether we think that it would increase or decrease GFR. Now, there are numbers that are listed here, but what I would encourage you to do is first just ignore the numbers. What I'd like us to do is go through each response and just first determine would it increase or decrease GFR. Because when you're in a test and you're under a time constraint, it would be more advantageous just to determine first, do they increase or decrease GFR? And then you might be able to eliminate some answers so you don't have to do as much math. All right, so let's start with response A, which tells us that there's an increase in the blood hydrostatic pressure. So we looked at the blood hydrostatic pressure on our diagram, and we saw that that increases filtration. So if you increase the blood hydrostatic pressure, you would increase filtration. And we saw that that would 
increase our GFR. So this is a potential answer. So this one so far seems like a good answer. All right, let's go to response choice B. So this states that we're decreasing the capsular hydrostatic pressure. So if we go look at our capsular hydrostatic pressure, we saw that the capsular hydrostatic pressure typically acts to reabsorb fluid. So if we decrease that pressure, we would decrease our reabsorption of fluids into the glomerular capillaries. So this too could increase our GFR. So this is also a suitable answer as of right now. All right, let's go on to C. So here we've decreased our blood colloid osmotic pressure. So if we look at the blood colloid osmotic pressure up here, we saw that it promotes reabsorption. So if we decrease the blood colloid osmotic pressure, we would decrease our reabsorption, which could also, let me write my up arrow there, increase our GFR. So this is also a potential answer. So we haven't been able to eliminate much yet. All right, let's go on to response D. So a 50% constriction of the afferent and efferent arterioles. All right, this one's a little bit challenging. So if we constrict the afferent, what we're doing is preventing as much fluid from entering into the glomerulus. So this by itself would decrease the GFR. Now we've also constricted our efferent. Now, if that were occurring just by itself, what we would do is constrict the exit, which would actually increase our hydrostatic pressures within the glomerulus. So this by itself would increase the GFR if we didn't have both of them together. But since we do have both of them together, what that would do is basically cancel one another out. So we would see very little effect here. So that's probably not the best answer choice. So let's go ahead and eliminate D. And also because we've shown that several of them can increase the GFR, we'll go ahead and eliminate E as well. All right, so we got a little bit of headway here, but we still have to figure out which would be the best answer, A, B, or C. In order to do that, we have to look at our average values for each of these different pressures. So you will have to memorize these, but if you go back now and look in your notes, what you would see is the average value for the blood hydrostatic pressure is 45 millimeters of mercury. The average value for the capsular hydrostatic pressure is 10 millimeters of mercury and our average value for the blood colloid osmotic pressure is 27 millimeters of mercury. All right, and it's told to us in the problem that in A, it's a 10% change, in B, it's a 50% change, and also in C, it's a 50% change. Okay, so now we have to do just very simple math to determine, okay, we've changed each one of these by a certain percentage, which one of them is largest? Because we want to know the greatest increase in GFR. So if we go in and do this math, I'm going to erase this just so we have a little bit more room. All right, 10% of 45 would be a 4.5 millimeters of mercury pressure change, right? 50% of 10 would be a 5 millimeter of mercury pressure change. And last but not least, 50% of 27 would be a 13.5 millimeter of mercury pressure change. So based on the numbers then, once we went into that final step, we determined that response C is our correct answer 
because although all A through C would increase GFR, C describes the greatest increase in GFR given the change indicated. Okay, so hopefully this helped to reinforce the concepts of bulk flow in the glomerulus and how we might be able to change GFR under differing conditions. So as always, please let me know if you have any questions with this material. Thank you.